This is Marianne from In Between Chaos, and in this video, I'm going to show you how I took this bed from dark to light and natural by first stripping it and then tackling it with bleach. For more details, please see my website, which I've linked below. And if you like what you see, please like and subscribe. So this is the back of the footboard before I began. You can see in the leg on the left some of the faux distressing with the gashes and wormholes. I started with the citrus strip, laying on a thick layer, covering it with plastic and letting it sit overnight. You can see here that the stripper is working, but it's a bit difficult to scrape off and clean up. After I worked through the whole side, I covered it with stripper and plastic again and let it sit overnight. Here we are after the second night of sitting. You can see that the stripper is very sticky and conformed to the creases in the plastic. I tried to smooth out all of the air bubbles, but it was next to impossible on this large piece. As I pushed one down, it would just slide over to another spot. As I scraped up the second coat of stripper, not much color is coming off at all, so I don't think the second night of stripping was helpful. Here you can see the amount of work it takes for each section. So doing a second coat already adds a lot of work to the project. At the end of this second stripping, I'm happy with the color on a lot of the piece, but I'm really worried about some of the splotchiness, which was caused by the plastic. You can also see that there is just a lot of gunk that I couldn't scrape or rub off. At this point, I was tired and frustrated and knew I needed to change things up. After the frustration with the citrus strip, I decided to go back to what I knew worked. I got some quick strip this time and started on the front of the footboard. With a chip brush and a metal container, I laid a thick layer of the stripper on, careful not to keep brushing over it. Here is a close-up to show you just how thick the stripper is. After about 15 minutes, you can see the wood lightning. I scraped a lot of the sludge off with a plastic putty knife. The sludge is really dark because it has pulled up a lot of stain. It's helpful to work in small sections so the stripper doesn't dry out while you are working. Next I work into the grain and the crevices with a nylon bristle brush and using extra stripper as needed. Then I put some stripper on some steel wool and work any tacky areas. Sometimes if the stripper is a little thin and dries just a bit, it won't come up with just the scraper, so this helps those areas. To neutralize it, I use a new piece of steel wool and a soft rag and mineral spirits to wipe down the piece. And lastly, I use a wood skewer to get into the little cracks. I worked through the piece like this, then brought it into the nice, warm, dry house to dry out. It's crucial for the wood to be able to dry well and quickly. I was feeling a lot better about my progress with the new stripper, so I started to try to fix the back. It just looked ill with lots of dark patches and discoloration. On one end, I used some mineral spirits and my scrubbing pad, but that had no effect. On the other end, I did some heavy duty sanding and was able to get some of the crease marks evened out better. But I also had these spots that just wouldn't sand out. They would look like they had sanded out, but then would just reappear, like they were seeping through from underneath. Here you can see the spots go away and then just reappear after a couple of minutes. Check out the spot just above the arrow and watch how it fades back in in the time lapse. After some research on these, I guessed that they were either tannin stains from the wood, mold from the wood not being able to dry out, or rust stains from the steel wool. To get these spots out, I turn to some oxalic acid wood bleach. You simply dissolve it in warm water like you would Epsom salts. 
then scrub it in. Some people just paint it on with a brush, then sand it off after it has dried. The process was simple and I was actually pleasantly surprised by the results. It pulled the splotchiness right out of the wood. Armed with this new knowledge, I stopped using steel wool and started using these scrubber pads instead. And you shouldn't use steel wool if you are planning to use any type of water-based top coat. I actually found that these pads were a huge upgrade. They were much easier to use, they worked better, and they were cheaper. They were heavy duty enough to easily scrub off any tacky spots that remained after my initial sludge scrape off. Check out my website to see my finalized process. To begin preparing for staining and finishing, I thoroughly sanded the piece using a variety of tools. After sanding, I vacuumed it off, then used a tack cloth to get any last bits. Now I was ready to address the color. I had three main issues. The first was that the overall color was too dark. I knew that any top coat I put on would darken the wood, so I needed to lighten the overall color even more to allow for this. My second issue was that the grain was still too pronounced and dark. It is really difficult to pull stain out of the grain, so the grain was really showing up and I didn't love the look. And lastly, I had mismatched woods. The majority of the piece was made with red oak, which has a pinkish tone to it. But the inner panels appeared to have a white oak veneer on them and looked more yellow. Although this wasn't an issue when the piece was stained so dark, it was an issue now that I wanted a natural finish. Next, I used a two-part bleach. This bleach goes on in two steps. There are some brands where you mix the two parts together first, then apply it to the piece in one step. I purchased Zinzer, which you need to apply in two parts. I applied part A with a sponge, let it sit for about 15 minutes, then applied part B with a separate sponge. It's important that part A does not dry or the reaction will not occur. Just to test the differences in the bleaches, I left the bottom left of the back of my footboard open to use a regular chlorine bleach on it. I just wiped it on with the rag. After it dried, it was easy to see the difference. The parts where I had used the two-part bleach had lightened in color, and the red areas now matched the inner panels. But the darker grain was still an issue. On the part where I used just the chlorine bleach, it was still red and darker, but the grain was much less pronounced. I did have a few issues with the AB bleaching process. One was that the A coat would often dry out before the 15 minutes was done, which was the recommended sit time for hardwoods. If it dried out, the reaction would not occur. Secondly, when I was wiping on the B solution, it was hard to tell where I had already applied the B solution. After the bleach had dried, it became evident that I had missed this entire piece except for the splashes of the B solution that had landed on it. On a side note though, this gives a really good before and after for the AB bleach in general. After the AB bleach is dried, it will leave a white salty residue on the piece. I sanded this down. I have a Bosch orbital sander that works beautifully on flat open surfaces, and I can use it over gentle curves. To get in the corners and right along edges, I use my Ryobi corner cat sander. And I finished up some of the really tricky parts with a sanding sponge. On some of the finials, I also used the sanding attachment on my Dremel. To neutralize this, I used vinegar and water mixture per the instructions on the bleach. I wiped it off and then let it dry completely overnight. Now that the wood was lighter and the red tones were gone, I was ready to tackle the last problem, which was the dark grain. I set up the pieces out in the sun and used a brush to apply the bleach. I did not dilute the bleach, although you can if you want to minimize errors. It just takes more coats. I used a basic paintbrush and simply painted it on with continuous strokes, working from the bottom up. If you work top down, you could get drips across the dry wood, which can be hard to remove. Another key was to use regular bleach, not the thicker, splashless bleach. 
You want it to go on thin to go on easily and uniformly. Also, please be sure to wear safety goggles. My footboard tipped and splashed the bleach and this was the result. You may have noticed that the headboard looks a little different than when I started. To get it to fit under our window, I cut down the two headboard posts. I reused the hanger bolt by drilling a hole in the top finials to screw it back on. After three coats of the bleach, I double rinsed the piece with water and let it dry. I was happy with it and ready to seal. I feel like I started stressing over sealing the wood before I even began stripping it. I'd had projects in the past where I worked so hard to strip it, but when I applied a protective coat, it just darkened right back up. I tried a little bit of finishing wax first, but the color really darkened. I then went to polycrylic in a matte finish and really loved the results. The darkening was so subtle it was hard to tell where I had already sealed the wood. I'm really in love with the feeling this bed has brought to our room. It has classic lines but with a more modern light finish. My favorite part is probably the turned feet on the footboard. If you're looking for product sources or more information on how I finish this piece, please check out my website. And if you want to see what I get into next, be sure to subscribe.